There's a feeling I couldn't escape while watching Kyoso Giga. Even its OP carried this distinct flavor through. A feeling of nostalgia. Not towards the show itself, we're not talking about some relic of a bygone era in anime yore here, but for home. My home. Through its eccentric, but ultimately human family drama, Kyoso Giga whisked me back to those days gone by with my own family, before time and circumstance worked their wedge. No matter how much things have changed, and how much they stay the same, I can't help but look back at that time fondly, though if you told me that then, I might have said otherwise. With the independence you gain as you grow up, there comes a solitude that's as liberating as it is hollow, as if you lose a part of yourself you can't get back. Isn't that what families are? A cycle of growth and decay, of togetherness and separation. A visual delight and Rie Matsumoto's directorial masterwork, Kyoso Giga is about this drift. This is a tale of a particular family, a tale of love and rebirth, the narrator frames each episode. Growing together, growing apart, each of its characters goes through this cycle in unique, telling ways. But for there to be loss, there must first be gain. This family starts with a father and a mother. Myoe, the father and a god, disenchanted by the noise of the people, finds peace at the edge of town, but it was a lonely existence. Lady Koto, the mother and a rabbit, granted a human body by the Buddha, enters brandishing him with love. Gradually, they filled the empty shrine with a noise of their own. Yakushimaru, the adopted youngest son and a human. Kurama, the eldest son and a drawing. Yase, the middle daughter and a demon. Together, this eccentric family lived happily, yet the concerns of the capital pushed them back still. Rather than give up their carefree world together, Myoe simply created a new one, aptly named the Mirror Capital. In this wonderland, nothing ever died and nothing was ever born. In short, nothing ever changed. Of course, things couldn't stay so simple. With Lady Koto's contract up and the threat of bringing destruction upon their world, the mother and father leave their children with only the memories of their time together and a promise they'll one day return. The series opens with Mioe, also known as Inari, longing for the days shared with his loved ones through the starry gaze of his memories. He says the sun shines only on the past, the future clouded in mystery, while he remains stuck in the present, dreaming of their reunion. It's this nostalgia for home that drives each of the characters' actions. Kurama wants to break free from this world. Though he embraces the mirror capital as a kid for allowing him to do as he pleases, he now sees it as a sort of prison, keeping them locked away until their parents return. Kurama wants nothing more than to see the outside world, and feels guilty for forcing them here in the first place because of that desire. Yase stores her memories in material goods, clinging to them like the worst of hoarders. She hates the station opening because it threatens to pull these away. She is the unwanted thing left behind. In the past, she told her siblings she liked the Mirror Capital precisely because it was so unchanging. All she cared about was spending time with their mother. With Lady Koto gone, Yase latches on to any piece of her she can find. Child Koto, meanwhile, feels like she missed out on that past. She wants to find the family she never got to experience, looking ahead so she can look back. If all you have is the future, and the future's so uncertain, then who are you? Koto keeps plowing forward in hopes of finding these answers, breaking into the Mirror Capital in search of her mother. Finally, there's Yakushimaru, now taking on the name, appearance, and role of his father, Mioe. Having his original family taken away, Yakushimaru gave up on life, before Mioe gives him a second chance as his and Koto's son, though he viewed it as more of a curse. Even so, with time he came to love his mother and appreciate his place within this family. The promise he made to his father keeps him tied to this place, where time seemingly stands still. The pomegranate, the life-giving fruit, represents Mioe's existence, his second chance, but seeing no reason to continue existing, it rests on the train with the other unneeded objects. The younger Mioe's arc illustrates the weight of expectations parents place on their children, the almost predetermined pressure to follow in their footsteps. Part of what makes this family dynamic work so well is how perfectly normal their relationships are despite their outward peculiarities. Who knew a show about gods and drawings come to life would prove to be among the most human stories of family in anime? No matter how wild or fantastical its narrative gets, Kyoso Giga never loses sight of that personable touch. For the kids, with the breakdown of their rules and boundaries and no parental guidance to keep them straight, they beat the hell out of each other. That is, until Lady Koto makes a surprise re-entry into their world, immediately filling it with the life it missed. But with the happy time seemingly back, all is still not well. What the four wanted wasn't simply a return of their mother, but a return to that time. Things have changed as much as they remained. Just as Inari passed his duties on to his son, Lady Koto asks her daughter to save her husband from the dream he's trapped himself in the dream to create new worlds and find purpose. Yet, these pressures weigh on her as their fathers rest heavy on Mioe. It's a cycle of wishes and aspirations, passing them along from generation to the next. 
parents often yearn to live out their dreams through their children and reverse their own failures. That's why Inari splits his ability between his first and his last. To Myoe, the power to create, to Koto, the power to destroy. With so much expected of you, it's easy to succumb to that pressure and feel like an extension of your parents. How do you become your own person? How do you find your own meaning in life while accepting the responsibilities your parents bestow upon you? But it's not just the younger Myoe and Koto suffering from that weight. Inari himself grappled with and ultimately rebelled against the forces of his father. Do you have to follow your role? Inari went against his by creating the Mirror Capital, the world that should never have existed. In the end, Inari is still a child himself, whimsically toying with the laws of the universe and his creations to fabricate his own sense of purpose. The realization of this comes as a shock to Myoe, who waited in this world for years based purely on the word of his father. Kids view adults as these infallible beings. What they say goes. As they grow older and become adults themselves, they realize everyone, parents included, is still a child at heart. They're as flawed as any. Myoe wants to reject his role, determined not to let Inari's whims rule his life, but instead wanting to make these choices for himself. With his father's name and power, Myoe was the true ruler of the Mirror Capital, but he never wanted to accept the role. He always looked towards the past, keeping it frozen in place until his parents returned. Kurama tells him, your world doesn't change until you do. Myoe refused to grow up, and as such, their world stayed the same. Yase and Kurama found meaning in their creation as Myoe's playmates, but Myoe never could find his. The room of the Council of Three was his crib, nurturing him until he found it within himself to accept these responsibilities. It's easy to look back at the past with rose-tinted glasses, but steady your gaze there for too long and you'll become rooted in it. The past will never return. It's always better to look ahead than look back. Even with the world crumbling around them, Kurama notes how much brighter it is above, outside, than trapped in a hole. The future may be uncertain, but it's the only way forward. Besides, your past is always a part of you. Better to build on it than be satisfied in it. To do so is to rot in a hole. Kyoso Giga is about this cycle of family. How parent and child are truly reflections of one another. How the past gives rise to the future, which in turn comes back to the past. How the child is the parent's hope. To do better. To be better. Family can cause pain as much as heal it. Inari lost sight of the value in their togetherness, and as such tried to disappear, until both Kotos slapped the sense back into him. Their family is a part of him, whether he likes it or not. He can't so easily drift away from it. Family comes from the small. It's in those everyday moments that seem inconsequential at the time. Meaningful in its triviality. It's the people who understand you better than anyone, but don't remember to stop and ask what you think. Family is about being together, even when you're not together. The value of it is in its very existence. You don't need a reason to be a part of it. Just being here is more than enough. Despite the ups and downs of my family throughout my childhood, I'll always feel that nostalgia. We're split up now, scattered across hundreds of miles. Rare is the opportunity we all get to be in the same place at once. Maybe that's why I can't help but feel a tinge of sadness, thinking on what's lost. But I take comfort in believing that as we drift apart, so too will we stay together. For family is a cycle. In love and rebirth, Kyoso Giga ends much as it began, with a shot of a particular, yet also regular, family.